Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alicia from Alicia Be Creative and it's officially the week that we are launching two videos a week on my channel. I'm so excited. I have been prepping for this for what seems like forever so I'm really excited to be able to put together this Tuesday video for you. So today's tutorial is a super fun animal theme print style tumbler. It was actually inspired by a pair of earrings that I saw on a Hobby Lobby trip and it kind of just took over from there. So I can't wait to share with you this super cute animal print inspired a tumbler. And of course, we're go going to be using a, a brand new style from the Steel Magnolia Company. And that is their True 22 Cafe. It is the True 22 style uh, base with a dome lid. And so I'm really excited to be able to give you this video today. So in today's video, we'll be making kind of the bulk of the cup or working with the stainless steel part. And then you'll have to catch us back on Saturday to view how we finish out the dome lid. So of course, everything I use in today's tutorial will be listed and linked down in the description box down below. You'll even find discount codes for the products that I like to use as well as links to all of my social media. So if you haven't, definitely make sure you give this video a huge thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I'm really excited for all of the tutorials that I have planned for this coming spring. So I hope that you continue to join us each and every Tuesday and Saturday. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's tutorial. So I am starting out with a True 22 ounce tumbler, just the base of that True Cafe, and I've already spray painted it with a brown colored spray paint, which I'll insert the color right here. And what we're gonna do first to kind of match the earrings is we're going to apply some black paint. So the paint that I put in that medicine cup is actually called Black 3.0. It's supposed to be the blackest, truest black. Um, it was purchased from a company, which I will list down in the description box, but it's a Stuart Simple paint and it really is a very 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 dark black and like when I thought I had black paint apparently I really didn't so this is definitely the darkest paint that I've ever used so you can definitely use just regular black acrylic paint please don't feel like you need to go out and purchase this but I just use this because I had it on hand and I didn't have any black acrylic paint so I am just applying with a paintbrush just a bunch of kind of random dots and they're not full circles. They're more kind of like long ovals, if you will. And you're going to see that I'm going to put some kind of larger dots and go back to some of the smaller dots and make them a little bit thicker. So again, we're trying to match the earrings, but obviously understanding that I don't exactly have the exact same paint color. So just making sure that I have everything that I need on my tumbler, just kind of sporadically putting the paint where there's some open spaces and just trying to really cover the entire cup. Again, when I first started this cup, I kind of was just going to go with something to match the tumbler or to match the pair of earrings that I saw. But you're going to see that this cup definitely just starts to transform as I just begin to add more and more things to the cup. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up this tumbler here and just finish applying the paint and just let that dry. It is acrylic paint, so it is going to dry really quick, and then I can go ahead and move in to the next step of the process. So once my acrylic paint has dried, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna use some foil sheets that I have. So I have just some tacket and a chip brush, and I'm going to be using, instead of the foil that everybody has been using to add to their tumblers, I actually purchased these foil sheets probably like a year ago and this is the first time that I opened the package so I definitely have a craft supply issue because sometimes I forget that I have things that I could be utilizing and this is one of those things so they come in like really thin sheets of foil separated by pieces of like parchment paper in between each sheet and it comes with gold bronze and silver sheets so these are what I'm gonna to use to apply to the tumbler. So we're gonna do the same method, method of applying foils like you would with those very popular foils that everybody is using in the tumbler community. Um, we're gonna do it the exact same way using the Tacket method application. So I'm just using my chip brush and a little bit of Tacket and just randomly putting kind of brush strokes all over the tumbler. And that is so that I can then go back and apply these foil sheets. So then I'm gonna take my heat gun because I'm a little bit impatient and I'm gonna speed up the drying process of the Tacket so it's at its tacky phase so I can add the foil. So now with all of that 
dried, I'm going to take my foil sheets and I'm actually going to rip different sections. And this was so that I didn't get too much foil on there. Um, and then I'm just going to apply them to the cup. So I'm just taking those really flat pieces of foil and just kind of burnishing them down into those tacket areas all the way around the cup. The reason why I used these versus like the foil flakes I typically use is because I really wanted to be able to see the brush strokes that you can see when you're using this type of foil because it's flat right so it's like a flat sheet of paper versus the foil flakes they're they're kind of crumpled and wrinkled already so you don't get that beautiful brush stroke when you brush everything off with your chip brush so that was kind of what I was going to what I was going for um, and I didn't have any of the popular foils in gold so I decided to utilize a craft supply that I've clearly been hoarding for way too long so now that I have all of those pieces applied to all of the tacky spots on my tumbler. I'm just going to take another dry chip brush that has nothing on it and I'm just going to brush off all of the excess foil. So just like you would when you're using foil flakes, same type of method. You're just going to brush off all of that extra excess foil that's just kind of stuck or just kind of sitting there and not stuck to anything and just brush all of that off. And then we have this absolutely, absolutely beautiful look with this brushed on gold. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing using some leopard print foil next. Okay, so now on for the leopard foil next. So I already have my cup. I haven't done anything to this after I've added the gold other than clean off my area and kind of just start fresh. So I'm going to put a little bit of tacket into a medicine cup. Um, you can certainly put this on a piece of paper like I'd done before. I just didn't have any paper available. And so we're going to do almost the exact same thing. I'm just using a different brush, but we're going to use these nail foils. So you can purchase nail foils from Amazon. They come in lots of different you know, colors, lots of different designs. And so I have this like leopard print one that I really wanted to use. I liked it because it was a darker brown versus kind of like the golder look that a lot of the leopard print ones come in. And so I'm going to do the exact same thing that we did with the foils that I'm, I'm going to do with this leopard print like nail foil. So I did struggle a little bit with this and I don't know if it was just the brush I was using or what, but I had a hard time getting some of the leopard print originally to stick. It took a little bit of kind of like really burnishing the foil down to make sure that I was getting it like lifted off of the backing that it comes on and onto the cup. So again, same process. I'm going to speed up the drying process of the tacket with just my heat gun. And then of course we're going to get into applying. So let me show you a little bit about how I was finally able to get this leopard print to stick to the cup efficiently. So the first few times around, I really struggled to get this to really stick to the cup. So I ended up grabbing like the little silicone tool that it comes with in the nail kit and ended up using that with a little bit of heat to get the foil to stick to the cup. And that seemed to be the most successful. You definitely could use like your squeegee tool as well. I just could not, of course, locate it when I needed it. So after being able to like really push this down into the cup, I used a little bit of heat as well, like made sure the cup was warm when I was applying it. That really did help get this foil to lift off the backing, which is obviously what I was going for. So definitely like something that you can use as well. So if you want to try out foils, but you don't want to invest in going to buy, you know, all of the super popular foils and just have a stock load of you know, craft supplies like I clearly do. Um, nail foils is definitely another alternative. I think it's a great kind of way to get into foils without having to make the commitment of buying 9,000 sheets that you may or may not use right away. Um, definitely if you're already using foils, I would love to see what you guys are creating because I am just getting into this and I really am having a lot of fun using foils. So definitely make sure you share those with me either in the Facebook group or certainly on Instagram uh, and tag me or just, you know, share them with me through DM. I just love seeing all the creations that people are coming out with using these foils. So I'm going to finish applying just some foils to the bottom as well. And then I'm going to put this on the turner. I am going to apply a little bit of polycrylic, which is that water-based urethane sealer. And that is just going to make sure that I don't have any lifting of the foil during the process of epoxy. So we're going to do two coats of epoxy and get into the decal.
All right, so I have opened GoDaddy Studio, which was formerly known as the Over app, and I'm going to create my wild and free decal in here. So I'm going to create just the fonts in GoDaddy Studio, and I'm going to save the geometric square part for when I pull it into Cricut Design Space. So I just purchased a geometric square from Etsy. It was just the easiest and quickest way because I didn't find one I liked in Cricut Design Space in the images feature. So I'm selecting this Belicia script for the word wild. And when I put it on the screen, I'm going to want to make sure that it is as large as I can make it on the transparent square that I have here. And that is just going to be helpful so that I can make sure that when I upload it to Cricut Design Space, it is the largest, the largest that it can be so that it's not super teeny tiny when I go to upload it and impossible for me to find when I put it on my canvas. So again, just enlarging that wild, doing the same with and, which is in the same script font as wild. And then for the word free, I'm actually going to go and download a new font from the font options in GoDaddy Studio. And I'm going to just search those fonts. I believe this font was called like Breathe or Please, something like that. Um, but you can search through all of these fonts. You do have to pay for adding fonts if you don't have the paid version of GoDaddy Studio. I happen to have the paid version because I use this often enough for me to feel like it's worth purchasing, but that's completely up to you. And of course, you guys know that you don't have to use this app necessarily, but this is just a great alternative for someone who's like me, who just sometimes like to create little cute SVGs to use. So I'm going to upload this to Cricut Design Space and go ahead and get this cut. So my cup is nice and smooth after two coats of epoxy. Didn't need too much more than that. So now I'm going to finish up the rim here. You guys saw me use this in my last tutorial. I've been using a nail file, like an, a, an electric nail file, to do my top rims for anything that doesn't have glitter. Glitter is a little bit harder to do with this style nail trimmer or nail file. Um, I'll probably stick back to using, you know, just a regular sanding block for when it's glitter. But when it's something that just has like a base layer of paint and a couple coats of epoxy, you really can get a nice, thin line of that stainless steel at the rim using this electric nail file. So I'm going to take just a 100 grit sanding block to take to the sides because it had been sitting for a little bit and I wanted to make sure that I had a scuffed up surface enough to make sure that my less coats of epoxy really do adhere to the cup well. So now that that is all sanded and nice and smooth, I'm just going to go ahead and clean this off just with a little bit of rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. You can certainly choose to take it inside and use dish soap and water as well. That's definitely an alternative to use. So once I've gotten that done, we're going to go ahead and get our decals all weeded and get these applied to the cup. So we're going to start with the geometric square frame here. Um, just taking my squeegee tool and applying that transfer tape. The the vinyl that I'm using here is that textured foil from Cricut. It's actually the black, so it, it comes in a couple different colors. And so I'm using the textured black one for this. And so I'm gonna put my cup on my cup cradle so that I can make sure that my cup doesn't roll all over the table and get this applied. So I'm just going to peel that backing off because this can be a little bit difficult to get off of the, uh, or get onto the transfer tape. So just flipping that forward and removing the back backing that way and then apply this to the cup. One thing that I did manage to not realize until after I had cut the decal was that I forgot to make sure that the shape was was already welded. So I had some cut lines in between some of the cross sections that I had to go back and fix. So definitely make sure that your your shape is welded so that you don't have the same issue I did. So now with the geometric frame already placed, I'm gonna go ahead and place the wild and free right in between on in between that geometric frame there. And then there you have it. So we're not gonna do the tutorial for the lid as part of this tutorial. That will be a separate tutorial. So you'll have to make sure that you come back on Saturday and watch how we finish out this cup. So you guys know that as soon as this was done, I put it back on the turner for two final coats of epoxy and then this is done. Let's go ahead and take a look at the finished result. If you love today's wild and free tumblr tutorial definitely make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel and definitely stop by on a saturday to watch how we conclude this tumblr with the rhinestone dome lid see you soon